Welcome back, everybody, to Bourbon or Baseball with your host, Bob, co-host Matt, and El Presidente Peter. Woo! <coughs> Next Woo-hoo. up, we got a very good team to, to talk to everybody about. Um, lots of fun cards, lots of photos. This one should be, hopefully, we can go quickly. I know it's, it might be kind of long. There's a lot of cards to go through here. Uh, you might be like, what team are we freaking talking about, guys? Meet the Mets. Meet the Mets. Step right up and greet the Mets. That is the New York Mets. <laughs> Fantastic theme sure? song. Actually, I don't mind that theme song. I really like the Expos one that we did last time, but um, um, Phillies were kind of rough. And I'm beginning Phillies fans. If if you if you had a better one, I did not know it. I'm sorry. I, I don't do a lot of research. I just like to drink and play showdown. <laughs> um, so first up on our list for the New York Mets is Elgardo or Edgardo Alfonso. This card gets picked up all the time. Oh, yeah. Great value for 350. You get a nine. Second base five. They have they have the best, if I'm not mistaken, the best infield building in the set. They have the perfect uh, yeah. building. <laughs> yeah, they got the 14. Yeah, which is what the showdown original set had. But great card here. Pretty good chart. Um, I wish a single range was a little bit smaller, maybe, um, or at least give me a single plus or something, but, or maybe one more doll. But I've seen this card just do amazing. Awesome card. Love the picture, everything. It's like a very classic number two or number six hitter, mm-hmm. especially for the point values in it. And just like a solid guy who'll get on base, really help the infield defense to let you take someone who's low on defense with a lot of pop. Uh, different part of the draft and then like you said only 350 points makes it real easy to slide him as a nine who's your fourth or fifth best hitter give me some stats here matt uh, he had 41 doubles oh so you he, had he, had that six, he should have the 16 <laughs> double range going yeah on. 27 home runs i mean he was a very solid player finished eighth in mvp voting man uh i feel bad the 385 gets a nine but i guess that's the product of having so many high on base percentages yeah i mean he had 108 rbis great i mean he almost had 200 hits which is it's always like when i look at like a guy who has 200 hits is like ichiro <laughs> yeah um but yeah i mean 123 runs what, what a great player so really happy here this is so this guy's got 385 on base percentage gets to nine just interesting the, just the interesting. next year he was a 10 with a 425 yeah, I wonder if he should have been an eight in this set. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Everybody no, I, should be. Yeah, I, I, I think he's good as a nine. Just tough that he walks at six. Yeah, so, you're right. No, no, he definitely was a nine. Sorry, yeah, he should be a nine. Yeah, he was the low range of the nine. I think that's why he's out through five. Yeah. Okay. Well, not as Scott Rowland was lower than him. Was Scott Rowland like four sixty? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like that guy better, Alfonso, because. You don't feel like you're reaching just for defense when you take them, but you're mm-hmm. still getting all that defense. Next up, Armando Benitez. I just watched a clip of him the other day on the Orioles fighting the Yankees. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, if you play Johnson, you go real high risk reward the entire game. Yep. Yeah. No singles, no doubles. Uh, it's crazy. I, I obviously don't think he's worth 190 because closure bonus, but. Um, I mean, what a what a crazy a lot of fly ball rates here, but um, I don't have three. <laughs> I think I think he'd probably one ninety in ours. I think it really they they it's so funny. It's like the lower the ERA went, the lower the control went. I think the lower the whip. Yeah, well, it's it, I I I think it's just purely they did tears like yeah, they kind yeah. of did tears, and then they were like, oh, he has a huge strikeout range. Yeah, so we have to give him the we have to give him the outs, and how do you do that when he's only got fifteen out chart? And there must have been, I mean, I honestly never played with strategy cards, so I'm just assuming there were strategy cards that could boost his control from time right. to time. Well, which they, makes this sort of thing even more dominant. There were specific strategy cards I know for closers. That's why the closer bonus happened because there were mm-hmm. lots of cards for when the closer came into the game or did this or that. Um, so. That's why a cl- a closer will have 190, and there's a guy that's also 190. It's like 20,000 times better than him because the strategy cards played an impact in that. And that's why yeah. I always had my leagues have – you have to draft a closer because I wanted those guys to get drafted because there's actually no value in drafting a closer at all in the OO set. Yeah. I, 
<laughs> Although I'll, I'll say for um, if he was just this card, he'd be 190 points in the at yeah. least the 2018 set. Yeah, he has to be. Th- that's actually probably very true. I just don't think he's a three one through eighteen no. out guy. No, he should have been a tier one. Yeah, he had a, he had a great year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the best story I have of him is, is Matt, do you remember the time where he had the bling in his ear? <laughs> no. else remember that? And he was, I don't. Was it, oh, right? was, I thought it was Bell or Bar- Barga. What's the bell? So he's facing the Indians and he, and I remember it was Omar Vizquel. It was Vizquel. And he's facing the Indians and, um, the Indians guy complains that he's distracted by the glare coming off of his, <laughs> off his earring and needs to take his earring out. <laughs> so Love that's it. my fun Armando Benitez story. I'm pretty sure it was Vizquel. Um, now I can't remember, but I remember Armando Benitez specifically, huge rock in his ear, getting <laughs> uh, distracting the Indians players. <laughs> Next up, Roger Cedeno. I feel like... Is he popular in your drafts? I feel like he's the type of guy that people would take. No, not for 400. They like their 10s with no homers to be in the 300s. <laughs> I just figured because he's got a 10 and he's got speed A. I'd say in he... our Discord he'll be popular. Yeah. I like him. I mean, I don't I don't mind him. I just It's like when I think at the home run from 15. 10, I don't want to spend 400 points. Yeah, but single plus a 15 is essentially like a home run at 7. He had 66 steals. Damn. Wow. You're right. I mean, that's why I like the... um, 23, this... 22 stuff. Yeah, I mean, this guy's at the same speed as half the league, and he had 66 steals. <laughs> I mean, yeah. the same speed as Ricky Henderson, and he almost had double his steals yep. in one last plate appearance. Yep. I think that's where, like, the free steal from the single plus factors in. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's got a he's got four single pluses. Yeah, and that's and that's very valuable. I just I hate having a one through five out guy. If this guy was like three fifty. I bet he'd be drafted all the time in my league. Yeah, oh, sure. But just being four hundred, it just seems it seems like a lot to only get like a ten a speed. But this is this is this be a great leadoff hitter because you're probably getting on second base pretty pretty often. Yeah, but and if he comes up with anybody on base, that's what's rough. Yeah, I mean that's just a one through eight oh, boy. Yeah, that's you're basically tough. just getting a single. <laughs> yep. If that. Mm-hmm. But what I like about this team on paper is they have a a great on base <laughs> through their set. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of speed. Yeah. Like a lot of like solid B guys here and there. Some A. They but had yeah, a great, the on base is just. They had great. a great year and a great team. <laughs> Next up, Dennis Cook. Um, I've actually seen this guy drafted. I don't know why, because I, <laughs> I assume it's because of 90 points, but I hate that he gives up the home run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it must be that he's uh, – because he's tier three for I 90 just, points. I mean, like, give me the 18 out at least. Give me the Chad OJ treatment. <laughs> yeah. So, next up is Sean Dunstan. Um um, this guy's not bad. I, I'm more of a Darren Lewis fan if I'm going to get a 7A speed because I get better fielding, but he's mm. got the better chart. That's um, a lot of singles. That's a, that's too many singles for me. <laughs> Probably one of the weaker yeah. batters on our team. He was the... Was yeah. He, he was one of the... Oh, he's one of the utility guys. He barely even played. He had 93 at-bats. Why did they make him instead of Bobby Bonella? Well, because Bobby had a terrible year. It, it's... This guy hit 344, that's why. <clears throat> Even though it was such a small sample size, they were like, that's exciting. What did he do in 98, I guess? They may have kind of meshed them together. Um, 90, well, he's a two-time All-Star in the late 80s, early 90s. 98, he only had 220 plate appearances, and he had, hmm. two, he had 255 on base. Maybe they were just already hating that they signed Bobby to like a giant contract to pay him for the rest of his life. <laughs> like, we can't we can't do this yeah, they should have done bobby with the uh like his 90 i guess he didn't do that much in 98 either yeah eh, i would have done it they didn't know what to do with their extra players <laughs> next up we have matt franco um huge walk range and single range here nothing crazy tons of building that he could play 
eight on base. That's about the best thing you could go for here. I don't really want to spend two ten on this guy. C speed. Yeah, and he he barely played too. He only had like one hundred and sixty plate appearances. It, he it absolutely sucks. I yeah. <laughs> he's another one who came in my original starter pack and was just brutal at every turn. Yeah, this like he'd like... either get out on his chart or he would walk, and he just he it was like oh it's sexy because he's a utility guy. Right. And it was like, oh, but no matter where I plug him in, he's a terrible number six hit. Like, most of their team, besides Brian McRae, played the whole season, it looked like. So that's impressive. Um, just... But, I, yeah, this is just, I don't know. <laughs> Did Brian McRae get traded? I, I don't know. Maybe that's why, you know, they had I a slider like guy in. On... The Cubs? No, he's on the Blue Jays in the Blue set. Jays. Is he pennant or is he a, okay? So he was at least he's on this team on the on uh, baseball reference for uh, yeah, no, like uh, he's, I think he started he's started on the Mets and then got traded probably mid season or something because mm. they like made the cards based on where they ended up. Yeah, like, you're right because he was okay. Yeah, he's in the original set on the Blue Jays. Okay, that makes sense then. <laughs> he's so a solid guy, too. so that's why Daryl Hamilton's on the team also, too. Yeah. yeah. And so oh. then you got the outfield card. Speaking too. up, Daryl Hamilton. This guy actually does get picked up a lot. Um, because he's only two ninety for a nine. But yep. um, man, this single range is rough, and I'm not even getting any A speed out of it. I would just be very upset with this chart. <laughs> yeah, I think this is like a classic. The manager thinking, you know, a kind of like, oh, I'm saving here. I'm gonna out outsmart it with the singles guy and then it's like oh my my lineup ends up being two chock full of really weak hitters with high on base yeah and i know that jeff even though he's not in uh on this pad uh podcast sorry that you didn't make this one jeff because i know one of your favorite players in here we'll talk about him in a little bit but um he did do the strategy where he's like i'm gonna draft all big on base guys i'm gonna draft them as valuable as i can and see what happens and he would get like a single or a walk and then like an out and like yep. a guy would be on base and he'd be like, all right. And he would walk. And, and it was like very, very disappointing. He did not do well. I think he maybe finished 500 in our season. Um, it, he just said he could never string it together. And whenever he could get a guy on base, the next guy coming up was like this. And it's like, what are you going to get from Daryl Hamilton? When you got a guy on first, you need big movement. <laughs> yeah. And 66 like percent of his hits were singles I'm in sorry. 99. So his card might be accurate, just it's just rough for a showdown perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Next With up, the Mets, he's good. Next up is the foil, Mr. Ricky Henderson. Which you got the uh you know, four twenty three on base percentage here. I like him. Yeah. I, yeah. I I almost wonder if he got kind of a boost for Ricky. He's four yeah. years old. <laughs> yeah, and just sort of like fan expectations, kind of like <clears throat> how they put out a, like a stronger Kobe probably in 2K if they're putting yeah. something out that really was down the stretch. And I like he, I don't think he earned this card, and I don't know if I'd ever pay 450 points for this card. I wouldn't. But his, it, O-1's, looks, his O-1 card is pretty valuable, but – I, mean, I, I love the picture that they got. Oh, it, it's fantastic. I also love that he is, he actually, at 40 years old, had an on base of 423 and batted 315. Yeah. I think what it's a, very impressive. I, I think statistically he did earn this card. He had 12 well, homers mean, and 30 doubles. He doesn't get a homer off his chart. But, I mean, it's close. Yeah, because that's not even in 600 plate appearances. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. I think two doubles isn't saying that much, and two single pluses can be earned by his 37 steals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he did hit 315. I think it's actually it's super impressive year. for a 40-year-old guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's in, God, he's so good. I know, maybe it's just partially because he had so many other amazing seasons. Right. But this one feels like such a yeah, down. I mean, we've made – well, we've at, you know, as the Royal we – We've all made we've made the Ricky Henderson card for the blog, and and seeing some of his other years have been pretty stellar. Yeah, his MVP, his Toronto I, championship, mm-hmm. which is I guess a lot like this one. Yeah, it's just expensive. Four fifty, 
It's just rough. Like I draftable, I don't really want this card. Yeah. Next up, Oral Hershaz or the Bulldogs. Best first name. Mm-hmm. Played for the Indians. I used to used to love them as Indians, but um standard four control, one through fifteen out guy. You know, for forty more points than your standard it's, would you rather have this guy for forty more points or three control one through sixteen out? I, I prefer the control three one through sixteen. No, I don't. I like the control. I don't like any tier fours. <laughs> well, I was gonna I say mean, I, I've seen oral drafted a lot because of the four control for three sixty oh. points, but I don't see many three control guys get drafted. So I was just wondering what you guys' opinion were on. I mean, I usually end up with the control threes to save a little because they're the same tier, and I hate like especially the lower end guys. Maybe this is just like. They're going to get shelled either way against really good lineups. And it's just like so much more demoralizing when you're giving stuff off your own chart that then sets up the big rather than just like giving up a bunch Man. of big off pairs. He had a rough <laughs> year with uh, with the Mets. He had 4.5 ERA. The whole team had terrible ERAs. <laughs> Plus his like picture. I really like the black jerseys. Yeah. I They picked a tough facial expression for him though. Yeah, yeah. And I'll I'll be honest, as a child, <clears throat> this card poisoned me against like knowing Oral Hershiser used to be a perennial Cy Young candidate. He was he was a stud. <laughs> I was like, this guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was he was pretty dominant, obviously in the Dodger days. Um obviously he was he was he was pretty good at Cleveland. I I I, I wonder if that was more just because the Indians were so good. Not so much him. He had like a, I think that ninety five season he was a legit tier three. <clears throat> he had a I three mean, eight seven ERA, one point two whip. Oh yeah, he did. I mean nineteen eighty eight for the Dodgers, he had like fifteen complete games. He had two two six ERA with a, was it a one point oh five two whip? Yeah, sit, That's stay just, tuned, fellas. Uh, that's his Cy Young year. <laughs> yeah, he was a stud. But, yeah, anyway. I mean, he was almost, let's see, he was 40 years old for the Mets in this picture. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Man, and that's just weird looking back. Like, his rookie season, he was 25. Oh, like, yeah, imagine keeping a guy old. with this much arm talent in the minors until he's 25. Yeah. Did he go to college? Yeah. Oh, gosh, he went to Bowling Green. Oh. He was a seven. Uh, that's why he was a 17th round pick. They never thought he was going to do that. And then yeah. he must have been dominating. He's the bulldog. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Next Stunt. up, Al Leader. Uh, starter control four, one through 15 out. Basically, just what we just saw with Oral Hersizer. Um, nothing, nothing crazy here. Same thing. So if you're looking for control so good four, for the Marlins. What's up? You're so good for the Marlins. Oh, yeah heartbreaking next up is excuse me jeff's favorite card john olerud we used to joke with jeff because he ended up drafting john i think in two different leagues i think one he tried to get the mets version couldn't get him and got the you know the mariners version or something but he, <laughs> that's why we always joke that he loved plus one first baseman because he yeah. always had like john on his team <laughs> but and he the, always does well like, well, I feel like he always outperforms this uh, weak chart. Yeah, he's done it well in my leagues that I played. I think what's so valuable here is that for 290, you're getting the 10. So we talked about Roger uh, having 400 points. Like, this is the guy that people end up picking up a lot. It's about under yeah. 300, and you still get a home run. So, I mean, plug him into, like, your, honestly, six hole just to, like, walk and knock guys in that get on ahead of him. Good hitter. Yeah. Um, let me look up real quick. Um, his uh, pennant run, though, did he get a bonus on speed? No, he still sees speed. But he I is... Like it's almost the exact same card. But he is 360. He has one more home run. Oh, okay. That um, makes sense. But 5 through 12, 13 through 16 is his single. Um, same double range, but he has the one more home run, and he jumps up you know, 70 points. So I think what was happening is a lot of people would draft this John Olerud 
and then they would end up drafting the other one if they couldn't get this one. He, he ends up just going so often. I mean, you're talking about, like I was saying with the Roger Stenio card, people in my league like the 10s, but they don't want to spend 400 points for them. So that's what's that, what happening. Tenant run o- Olerud, it, I think, is worth the 360. Yeah. Dang. I mean, that's like a, honestly, if you're doing like a cheaper team, yep. you want to hit him third or fourth, mm-hmm. you're going to get the production for it. That's yep. awesome. For 360, good, too. Good for Seattle. <laughs> Next up, Rare Donias. This guy gets drafted all the time. And basically, what you're doing here is you're drafting a 90 point player to get plus five short stop. That's all you're drafting him for because you're not expecting Tim to do anything at all out of the match. Um, and I'm grateful for it. <laughs> oh, right ahead. I've, I've picked up him a bunch of times in my old league. Um, old, old, like when I was a kid, because um, you know, I, grabbed, <clears throat> I grabbed some salary savings so I could get Doug Glanville. <laughs> I mean, you know, I just... I Yeah. I mean, I can't really talk because in your league, I think I've got two punts <laughs> right now. <clears throat> like, but... I don't know. In the the original ones, I just I hated having a guy like this in my lineup, and like I just I I don't I maybe <laughs> spread cards make it different. Just like the double play chances don't come up enough to justify like throwing away lineup spots for defense alone. No, and and I get that. Um, we also uh, we lost Matt for a second. Oh. Um, so yeah, well, <laughs> it could be just it could be just Jeff's uh you know Zoom thing that we're using, but um as we lost Matt for a second, um so me and Peter will try to continue this the best we can for you guys' pleasure, you know hopefully just like not, old times, not too boring. <laughs> like oh we haven't heard those guys oh his comp- oh it's his his actual <laughs> computer shut down so uh, we'll Ooh. we'll just keep chugging along here and hopefully Matt will rejoin us with the stats. Um let's go real quickly then and look at what happened then. Uh, where is Rare oh, um, Yeah, he had a 319 on base percentage, so kind of tough for him to get the six when, you know, like some of the guys with 280s God. are six. This is a rough year. I mean, he played a whole year and he had like 49 runs, like yeah, 60 four, RBIs. Like, he's just rough. He was definitely hitting in the eight hole. Oh, yeah, especially. I think um, it depends on their pitcher. The pitcher might have been batting ahead of him. <laughs> he had uh, one homer. But here's what's nuts. He had 60 ribbies. <coughs> yeah, he had more than Henderson, more than... I mean, he had to have been knocking in people that just are ahead of him because he was... I mean, he only had 49 runs. That's rough. I don't, I don't understand, while he's gone, how this Benny Agbayani didn't get a car. The one who had... Was oh. in twice as many games almost as Daryl Hamilton. Had a <laughs> three on base percentage, 14 dingers, 18 homers, three triples. Like... Judging by what they gave <laughs> Scott Rowland, they would have given Benny an on base eight homer at set, like he would have been a Mike Lieberthal type card. Well, if you remaster yeah. it, you might have to throw Mr. Benny in there. Yeah, I he should be in there. I don't know what, what happened where Matt Frank well, Matt Franco was in a lot, but I don't know how Sean Dunstan gets a card. So that Benny was Benny's Dun- that'd have been Benny's basically his rookie year. Yeah, that would have uh, yeah, cause that yeah, cause he only played in eleven games the year before, and and he only played for five years, so he he didn't stick around. But I mean, what? But that'd be a fun card that no one, you know, I'm sure some enthusiasts of New York Mets would have been like excited to see. Yeah, I mean, like I just you know he he earned it. Yeah, uh, for the season he was the the one. I mean, I, he was in the top eight of plate appearances for guys who finished on the team. Yeah, just Daryl Hamilton. Don't know. Did not have that many, <laughs> and Dunstan left. Yeah. Well, I guess Daryl Hamilton. So Daryl Hamilton, they got him from Colorado. Okay. So like he actually had 568 plate appearances. Oh. But, but and so like the reason he was a nine, he had a 386 on base percentage for the year. Okay, that's so not, they, okay. They traded for him. Yeah, I guess when uh, I'm only looking at the statistics from the Mets point of view at this point, yeah. so. But still, Benny would yeah. have been number nine. He would have been there. Yep. He's gotten up. Next up, Mike Piazza. So this is what we're talking about again, where I will repeat it again. Catchers <coughs> end up in two ranges in showdown. It's either punting 
and grabbing arms or you're grabbing monster power. This guy has a ton of power on his chart. He had 40 home runs this year. Um, you know, had 361 on base. He might have been close to earning that nine on base, which I don't know if they just, you know, like Mike Lieberthal, like they gave him the eight. And so they just mute the catchers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a great uh, chart here with the 14 double. They might have moved him down just so they could get a bunch of home runs on his chart. But I feel like he's like a nine seventeen home run guy. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think based on where the other, I'm like, he has a lower um, base percentage than Vlad did that season. So, God, this is what's ridiculous. So, like, he has two less homers than Vlad. Yep. And I guess he's got, you know, he's got less plate appearances, but not by that many. Just. Yeah, you know, for a catcher, he played a lot. <laughs> yeah. 41 games. Yeah. Uh, they weren't afraid of the arm. Also, Pat Mahomes was on this team. Is he on this? This is like, a, like Pat Mahomes' father, Pat Mahomes. I was, I was just looking if he had any stats. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, uh, man, he was in, he pitched 63 innings, long reliever. Oh, there he is. Eight, no. Yep. Should That's pretty heard. cool. There's Matt. I hear him. I'm back. He's back. I didn't, I didn't want to cut anyone off. No, we're talking about Mike Piazza. Well, I've, Piazza, I've been here, unfortunate for Piazza, he had an actual cut stealing percentage of 24, which explains <laughs> the plus four arm. Yep. And he was so he's so close to that plus five, and his uh, like true cut stealing percentage was 29. Huh. Or his, uh, I wonder if this guy should have got a nine on no, base, no, man. Wait, that's just like the league cut stealing percentage. Why oh. would they just put – so he's just a little below average. But he was so close to a plus five arm, mm -hmm. which probably would make a huge difference in people drafting him, which is, I mean, kind of silly. I just wonder if he would if he should have got the nine on base. <laughs> no, he had a three sixty one. Yeah. Like in our leagues, he would be a nine. For sure. He would have been an eight in the twenty eighteen set. Real uh well, well so we, still we, an eight. We adjusted the numbers in the last set to give right. sevens a bigger range, but it's just interesting to think about because I feel like he he had his chart or his on base percentage is not that bad compared to what we just saw with like Scott Rowland and whatnot. Right. Well, the next year is 398 and he was a nine. So. Huh. Okay. <laughs> next yeah, up, I'm... Kenny Rogers, the musician. Um, so because he does the no double, I'm guessing he's just a whopping 190 points here that I'm sure no one's drafting this guy. I hope not. Yeah. yeah no one wants to spend this much for that. Next I up. mean, if you're a if you're a gambler, <laughs> <laughs> very nice. This is when you fold them. Yes, 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 yes. Very nice. Not if or the coward, the old uh, coward of the county. I think that was another one of his big ground ball <clears throat> reads, though. If you did grab him, but I just why would I spend a, almost two hundred points on this guy? I just this is rough. <laughs> Next up, Turk Wendell. He actually gets picked up decently because he's the hundred point reliever. Um, he's pretty good, actually. Yeah. You're not going to get really hurt with this guy. I, I just end up seeing a lot of either punting or um, or grabbing like the John Johnstones. But if you're going to grab a, a couple tier threes, or it's not tier three, sorry, control threes, um, hundred points. You know, you can't, you can't, you're not doing too bad with that. Yeah, I wonder what happened where they. I guess his whip wasn't great, but he kind of got. There's no. Don't even look at the stats for pitching, Peter. You're just going to hurt yourself. It's, yeah. There's no sense in their statistics. I have no idea what they're doing. I still can't believe Pat Mahomes didn't get a card. Now I'm upset. <laughs> and Amarna Benitez has got a three as well. So I, I don't really know what they were basing that off of. Other than what you were saying, he had a big strikeout range. So they were like, well, we got to put enough strikeouts in. So that means his outs have to be higher, which means his control has to be lower. Yeah, so you yeah. hurt the card then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, like, it makes sense in principle, but you have to keep them in the correct tier before yeah. you do it. Yeah. Like at least Benitez and Randy Johnson both had really low whips. This guy's isn't that low, so that like then it just ruins all that too. Yeah. I mean they were like, oh, he's got a 1.36 whip. Screw the ERA. He's a tier four. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, actually, I, to defend this, in 2018 set we experimented and we did relievers purely on whip, and uh, I think Turk Wendell probably would have ended up in a similar place as like some of those Braves relievers. 
Yeah. Next up, Masato Yoshi. There's another two double. <laughs> yeah, and I've actually drafted this guy a couple of times, and he's killed me, so <laughs> the, the two double hurts so much. I, I just thought it was an experiment to get under the 320 mark for a 3, 1 mm -hmm. through 16 out, but yeah. it is so hard when you only have one walk, one single, and two doubles. I love the image. Oh, yeah. The black jersey with the blue lettering's great. And he looks just like, he looks so dialed in. Mm -hmm. The white pants really like stand out well too. But yeah, it's a, it's a tough card to use effectively. Yeah, nothing too great there with the two doubles. Robin Ventura, you know, rounding out that plus giant infield here. So I got the plus three infield. MVP candidate. <clears throat> But the cards, I mean, it's kind of whatever. I mean, 370 is pretty solid for a 9 plus 3. You know, we just went over Scott Rowland, who has the bigger home run range. So maybe this card is more valuable, but a lot of outs here. I don't know. I don't I don't get how Scott Rowland got a better card than Robin Ventura. Yeah, he had a really good year. How did he only get two? Does he only have two doubles? Well, yeah. Scott, Scott Rowland, I think, only didn't play a full season, right? But it's like his home run per like uh, God. his home run rate is still just over thirty one. Hmm. Scott Rollins and like Ventura had more plate appearances, but averaged out his is around thirty for six hundred. It's hmm. not enough to justify seventeen to twenty for Roland, especially since he should be penalized for having less plate appearances. Yeah, and then Ventura is almost forty doubles. And get shafted with a 16-17. <laughs> yeah, they really... <clears throat> well, someone should redo this card and make it... <laughs> so, I mean, geez, he played basically an entire year, 161. And uh, had, I mean, geez, like 588 at-bats. I mean, pretty damn stellar. I mean, like I said, their team basically played the entire season. <laughs> um, He's so many grand slams for me. Oh, Yeah. Like the the year I played with all the years put together, including like Colby's cards and stuff, <clears throat> Robin Ventura made the All Star team, hitting seventh for the Mets, who won the <laughs> NL East. And Ventura led the team in RBIs from the seven hole. He was an absolute monster. I actually be more interested to see your version of this card, just because I feel like the charts would be so much better. But it's disappointing to see. Do you, you know, it's funny, Peter, how you're talking about how well he's played for you. In my tournament, they won four to two, and he had all four RBIs. Stud. It's not bad. I mean, a nine eighteen home run guy is pretty solid. Yeah. No, he's uh, and he's an absolute. He's got the, the it factor <laughs> that you gotta look for in a card. <laughs> this guy is for sure in the picture. Serious uh, face. He, well, I'm saying, you know, when they throw the ball around before the inning start, that's his picture. Yeah. Yeah, this is not, back to this is not an action no, pose. No, this is this is why you knew he's gonna be such a clutch hitter. He's just <laughs> that cool customer. Like right now, he is throwing somebody out. No so way. Not he's like, he's like, I've got a plus three arm. I just take my time. <laughs> Zoom. <clears throat> it's probably because like um, I was trying to think of like Big Poppy's running or something. He's like, this guy ain't fucking making it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, it's an Ortiz grounder. Yeah. And I've looked at all the on base sixes behind him in the Twins lineup. I'm not worried. <laughs> Next up, Derek Bell. Obviously, not on the Astros, which I like him as. Um, but a seven, A speed, 190 points. They must have gotten him in the trade with my camps in, hmm. which i never would have thought about but weren't yeah. they both on the astros yeah he had such a killer mustache <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the card itself kind of underwhelming i you know big single big walk a lot of a lot of outs i hate hitting ground ball outs too i just don't really know if i draft this guy for 190 is this the same as his astros card oh i don't know that let me check I'm always very interested in the, the way that they... Oh, no, he was a, a six. They uh, they boosted him in on base. <laughs> yeah, he still was the A speed. They gave him more outs in exchange for the yeah. higher on base. And he's wow, like... they gave just, him a lot more outs. 
Yeah. So they tried to balance it out and then they kind of made them more fruitless at the bottom end. It's in, I think he's better. I like the picture better for the Astros. That's the determining factor. I call it, I look up Derek Bell, Elmy Show in 2000 on Google. Um, somehow, your guys, I'm guessing it's yours, Peter, Jean Carlos Stanton Mets old school image comes up. <laughs> Jean Carlos. I don't know why, but it comes up with the blog, you know, Grace Elmy Show on Blogspot or dot Blogspot. Random image. I don't understand. <laughs> I have no idea why it's there. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, because I, I searched just Derek Bell on Moby Showdown and let's see. I don't see any of uh oh wait, no, I see Craig Biggio. Huh. Like a really old that Craig Biggio from the ninety eight team back when <laughs> like before I started working with you, Bob, and my cards are like missized. Well that's what this one is. <laughs> this one's a like an old um John Carlos Santon card. But uh, it just Oh from the oh the Yankees one. Yeah. Oh, I see that one too. <laughs> I just don't understand why it's there. But anyway, anyway, I digress. Next up, John Franco. Another 100.3 reliever here. Sub three ERA. Yeah, he got checked. This was the only team he pitched for that year. His he whip's terrible, shafted. though. Yeah, oh, he had a that's high whip, that. but. Yeah, that did, him, that did him in. He had 19 admit. saves. Yeah. They like. Imagine, because it's the old school, the, like basically because Benita was a righty and Franco's a lefty. Yeah. The manager was like, I'm going to take my tier one guy and not put him in. We're going to throw <laughs> out my lefty. Yeah. Yeah, because they combined for like 40 saves then. Yeah. And they combined and, for an Ugerth or Bina card. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Next up, this will be fun. Mike Hampton, oh, this stud. <laughs> so no upset. doubles, three one through sixteen. Somehow is like a hundred and a hundred points more than he should be. <laughs> he's like a yeah. He's terrible cost effectiveness wise. B so like this is a one inning pitched less version of his normal set. Like they degraded him for no reason. They're all like, oh, he's going to be more tired in New York, I guess. <laughs> but, which actually sort of panned out the next year. He pitched 20 less innings and one less start. But he finished second in the Cy Young. He went 22 and four with a sub three ERA. Yep. And they gave him a tier four. <clears throat> like, they made him objectively worse than every other starter that they made on that 99 Houston team. They made him worse than Lima, Reynolds, and uh, Ellerton, who was a reliever most of the year. <clears throat> and yet Mike Hampton, 22-4 and four stud, finishing just second in the Cy Young voting, was ahead of Millwood, basically was Kevin Millwood. Well, that, that's what's so funny is you got Millwood and Johnson 3-1 through 18 outs. This guy's like, nah. Two less outs. <laughs> yeah, for no reason. Exactly. They're just like, screw you, Mike Hampton. I, it's really frustrating. And then they had a chance to fix it in the pennant run. <laughs> and they made him worse. <laughs> and then like, and what's nuts is they kind of priced him as though he was a control four, one through 16 out with no doubles, IP seven in the original. And in this one, and then they're just like, eh. Then they repeated it again the next year. Ugh. And oh one, one they gave him basically the exact same card, except he has that one more IP, and he's 10 less points. Don't really understand that. His, his best card is his Rockies one. He's on the Rockies. And he's only on 14 out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's his cheapest one, too. Yep. And he's terrible. I like. They make him a tier four all the time, but he's in the tier two or tier three range. I, it's it's one of because I just assumed he was a mediocre pitcher before he got that big contract based on his showdown cards. And it's like, oh, he's one of the few players who vastly outperformed what they gave him. Well, and that's exactly my what I was just saying there, Dave. I would have thought the same thing. This guy was kind of average at best. And then I looked at the Cy Young voting because I was looking up 
um, like where Pedro and everybody finished. And I saw, oh, Randy Johnson's there. Oh, Kevin Millwood's there. Those guys got really high cards. Oh, Mike Hampton's there too. Let me look up his stats. And I'm like, what the, f this doesn't even line up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure out of pure frustration, I put the 99 stats on the card made for the 98 team. <laughs> Google Images has pulled up this tier two Mike Hampton where he's <laughs> rushing onto the field to celebrate with his teammates. <laughs> I was actually exactly. wondering if, um, if like the, I always joke that the people that made this game were like Yank in New York and Yankees um, people because of, um, <laughs> Um, like the Yankees had so many foils. I was like, oh my God, the, the Yankees fans. It's all they are, Yankees fans. And then I couldn't complain because the Indians got so many, but maybe they just hated the Mets. <laughs> also, I I wonder if they distributed foils based on like success of the team. Like the World Series team got four or five, and then next playoff teams got like three or four and so forth and so forth. Yeah, I don't know. Which is how we should do it. We could do whatever we want. I, I think... You know, if Canada's going to buy cards, <laughs> yeah. no, Expos get a ton. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially Javier Vasquez. Whoever, whoever's got an ER <laughs> under five gets a full. <laughs> Next up, Bobby J. Jones. Um, pretty pretty decent card here. Uh, it's a little expensive, 450, but uh, nothing too crazy. Um, you know, seems about right. 450 seems like a pretty solid pitcher for five innings, six, six, six IP. I'd rather have that um, five IP guy we saw for the Expos, but. I have no idea how they gave him this card. Again, he is objectively better than Mike Hampton. Mike Hampton. Oh my God. I mean, he's more points than Mike Hampton. So it's obviously, he's a tier above Mike Hampton. <laughs> Bobby Jones. Had a 5.61 ERA in 1999. He did 12 starts. And the year before that, he had a four ERA. So it's not like he's coming off injury and was like killing it the year before. I really he think they served a two I three really in think, 98 or 99. I think that they thought three control was going to be the best. Three outs with like high, or sorry, three control with high outs was like better than a five control you know, six out guy, you know, I, or 16 out guy. I, I don't understand how they couldn't have done the very simple math of being like <laughs> your control plus your outs is like sort of the, like it's going to even out basically. Mm -hmm. And also how they didn't figure out giving up more charts equals more bad things. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't get it at all <laughs> because it's just, Oh boy, I think like Mike Hampton must have slept with somebody's wife. <laughs> Wizards. Like that's the only or she was like really into Mike Hampton. Do you yeah. have a go team? She's like, get yeah, Mike Hampton guy's really sweet. He's like, fuck that guy. Kicking the shit like, out of him. <laughs> yeah, I assume I mean, he should have been a five hundred point play a five hundred point player. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've got him at like five hundred seven points. Yeah, he had a sweet goatee. That was probably it. <laughs> we were talking about the goatees on one of those podcasts. Everybody's yeah. got sick goatees in the night in the two thousands. I mean, me during quarantine. <laughs> <coughs> Next up, Todd Pratt. Pretty solid here for a nine on base. Um, a little below uh, below average arm, but two seventy points gets you a nine. You just you just hate the giant single range. That's what hurts you the most. Um, Matt, what percentage of people on the Discord do you think would rather have Todd Pratt than Mike Piazza? Well, Matt actually got disconnected again. <laughs> All right. Well, that explains that. I was like, he's being real quiet. Bob, what would you think is like most uh, <coughs> would be more popular people taking Pratt or Piazza? I think Piazza would get picked just because of his power. Um, but I think people would, would think about it a little more than they probably should. <laughs> I, I think people – I think people – I, I think it's overthinking it, but there's been a hot trend lately. It seems like in valuing, like on like just normal on base and defense, over sometimes the clear cut power. It's like it's stumped. Yes, small ball's great, but if you can hit home runs, those are guaranteed. They're they're well, very valuable. The thing. I mean. 
he's going to get plus a base five, what's going to happen. Not that much better than plus four. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we the big debate on, on that on that Discord channel is like people that are very close and on base and, and power charges versus speed and on base and um, or fielding. I mean, we're talking about a guy with, with so much power versus the on base nine. I, I really don't think there's a comparison. It really. I mean, well, we, so where, well, where we I think the league, argument the argument is he's 140 points less. So it's like I get it on base, I get a better catcher arm, I save 140 points, and that's exactly the thing. That's where his this guy's value comes in. Like, do you want a sub 300 point player that's a nine on base? You, yeah, I I still wouldn't. I'd rather have Piazza, Same. but I see where the where the idea comes in. Like I'm saving value, I'm going to get on base, but you're getting on base walking or singling. You're not getting on base with like a chance for doubles if, you, if, you, if you're hot rolling. I mean, I could hot roll a 19 and be pissed off with a nine. With oh, a single. yeah. But like we saw in my league just this last season, Ryan Braun is a six. Kill it because his yeah. chart's so damn good. Not everybody. It depends on your league. If you're doing a like no salary cap league, obviously yeah. you're never going to draft Todd Pratt. But when um when you're trying to when you're trying to play around with the with the with the salary, you're grabbing a guy. Not every pitcher is going to be fives and sixes. Some guys are threes. And when that yep. happens, or relievers come in, uh, a Ryan Braun can get a can get a can get a you know a smack. So that's when I'd rather have Mike Piazza because he's going to have the much better chart. I agree. And I, I think where it gets interesting is leagues like some of the ones I've done with, um, you know, like where you just do all of one team or like Matt's uh, single elimination tournament he's doing right now, which you haven't checked out yet. The Mets, I believe, are still alive. And a favorite in one record. Yeah, he's doing March Madness. Like one uh, one loss, you go home for all 2,000 teams. Is he, and, um, is he going on the second round with the second pitchers or is he keeping the first pitcher? Second pitcher, so okay. it's like two man rotations. Okay, I, think, I still think the Braves are gotta be favored. Their their pitching yeah. staff is so ridiculous. Their pitching staff's loaded because they've got Matt, Maddox and Glavin out of the pen to go with Remlinger and uh, Rocker. Yeah, and then the I mean their order's insane too. So mm-hmm. they their way. Of, I mean the Indians are going to be really good. Yeah, I think the I, Braves I, just have such a good lineup for the two thousand showdown. Yeah, I mean, the Yankees obviously have a really good lineup. Um, and what's cool is anything can happen in one game. Mm-hmm. Especially since there's usually like two tier three pitchers, uh, starters on every squad. Yep. But the, the Expos, I think, took the Mariners out just because they have inexplicable. They have overvalued cards. They're not based on anything. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, like in bringing it back to the Mets, you get – Todd Pratt here, you're able to put him at catcher and DH Piazza. Oh, yeah. Then you do get that one extra catcher thing, which isn't a – I mean, honestly, I, I don't know really anyone who's like, oh, I'm now not going to steal with my speed A because he's a five instead of a four. Yeah. But, you know, 5% better chance is a 5% better chance. So, it just depends. I, mean, I drafted Mitch Garver in my, in my league because I don't care about the arm. <laughs> great pick. I want pick. that power. <laughs> great pick. Especially Next. for under 500 points. Oh, yeah. Beast. Next up, Todd Zeal. Pretty pretty, pretty solid card here. Pretty good chart. 15 double, 18 homer for an 8. Kind of slow, but um, we were just talking about, what, 290 for uh, John Orlu gets you the plus yeah. 1. He's a 10. But this chart's obviously <coughs> much better. I thought it was interesting <coughs> seeing him move from third base to first base. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then he obviously... Is- who they signed to replace um, Olerud. Yep, when he went to the Mariners. Yeah, I, I mean, I I like what he brings, too, especially since the team doesn't have... I mean, Piazza, obviously, and the Ventura, but they don't really have a lot of power. Um, Unless you're relying so, on Alfonso's uh, doubles. <laughs> yeah, which, you know, they don't really represent in the game. So, I mean, I kind of like as their six-hitter. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Olaru walks a lot. That's fine, but I kind of like having the on base eight with more pop. Yeah, so they I, have a, they have a fun team on paper and shot on paper because they have like the Ricky Roger, um, you know, ten A speed guys, and then like yeah. the monster power with like Ventura Piazza, and then they have John Olaru like also like as a ten, or you could obviously you could sub in Zeal. Um, it's just it seems like a fun like El- Elgardo Edgardo can be like the nine. 
Yep. Or or sorry, the nine. He could be like the two hitter, or you could probably slide him in the six hole or the five hole, depending. It's a pretty interesting team. Yeah, I liked um gosh, I think I always had God, did I because I always had a DH. Um because I just I'm too tired to have all these benches and then like 18 guys fit into the slots. Mm-hmm. So I think I had like, uh Cedeno hit ninth okay. to like the double leadoff, but it's one of those like tricky ones because Daryl Hamilton's out there too, and you're like, where to – so I think maybe you go Daniel lead off, hit Ricky second, um, and then you go Edgar, Piazza, Ventura, Olerud in the six hole. God, or Tonyas has to be like hidden in no. that like eight spot. Yeah, he has to hit eighth if you got Sedano at nine. Yeah. Um, well, Hamilton. I would have- I would have Ventura have in the three hole and Hamilton. Nine. I'd have Piazza in the four and, and Ventura in the three hole. I just think that extra on base. Yeah, yeah. switch him and Alfonso. Or or that. I mean, I, it's tough. I, obviously, it just sucks that Piazza's got the eight on base. So, like, yeah. for me, when I have eight on base guys, I slide them into the four spot because I want the higher on base guy in the two three hole. Yeah. No, I, I'd have Piazza fourth. Like, I, I'd have Sedano lead off. Ricky hit second. I think you're right. Um, Ventura hit third. Piazza fourth. I'd have Alfonso, Alfonso fifth. fifth. That's what I would. And then I'd have Olerud six. I'd I'd have Pratt seven, because I'm doing with a DH. Okay. Ardonia's eight. Hamilton nine. Yeah, and that's then, a that's a no, solid lineup. Pratt, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's what I how I'd make it happen. But they randomly had Terrence Long on this team, also. <laughs> yeah, there's so many like That's weird so cool funny. guys. I'm if if Matt and I do do this, I'm definitely we're Pat Mahomes is going to be on the team. So Derek, or sorry, you guys know Terrence Long from the foil um, athletics card that he had in 01. Inexplicably, for no reason. But in he actually started with the Mets. He had played three games, had three plate appearances. Two strikeouts, then he goes to Oakland, gets a foil. <laughs> he like a rookie in Oakland? I... Yes, he was the rookie. Then he finished second in the rookie of the year race. So, because he had eighteen hope... homers, eighty RBIs, glasses or something like that yep. in that foil yep. card. Yep. Yeah, that's what. That's what I remember mostly. It's just like he was at because I had that poster, the, the poster of all the foils. <clears throat> and uh, I remember just being like, how in the hell? I just remember being this- disappointing. Like, when I see a foil, I-, I hated seeing, like, Matt Williams as a foil, even though he was a stud. Like, I whenever I see a foil, I'm like, this guy's got to be a 9 or a 10. Like, it, just, it has to be this amazing pitcher, amazing batter. When I saw, like, 8s or 7s, like Dean Palmer, I'm like, where's the where's the foil? Like, where's or, the... <laughs> or, like, MVP finalist Matt Williams. And see, Well, it sucks seeing him as a 7, but... <laughs> His car is sweet, though. I'm excited when we get to the D-back. Oh, well, that, well, that's a killer-ass team. So, <coughs> The Mets took him out. That's right. Well, the Mets have a great team, and they should they should do well. Obviously, they didn't have the best pitching, but their lineup is stacked. Yeah. Um, so, so hey, that's everyone. That is what we have for the New York Mets. Stay tuned next time for a different division because we just finished up the NL East. Um, so, you know, Hey, if you guys want, comment on the YouTube channel, you know, comment on the blog. Let us know what you guys want to hear next. Uh, hit us up oh, on – what's up? All right. this They must have traded Kenny Rogers for Todd Zeal. Okay. So what a this- terrible trade if you're the Ranger. You're that <laughs> desperate for starting pitching. You want the control zero. <laughs> like, yeah, give up my starting third baseman. We just need some music for this team. Uh, um, yeah. But yeah, stay tuned, you know, for more. If you guys have any suggestions on teams you want to hear, obviously to let us know we can do those teams next. <clears throat> Other than that, we'll just keep chugging along. We got lots of teams to get done, and then we'll get done with this. If we're still under coronavirus quarantine, you know, maybe we'll do we'll probably go into the O ones and mess around with the with those. Um we definitely want to do some other fun stuff with drafting and other fun stuff. So everyone stay tuned for next time. Any parting words? Stay safe. All right, everyone, stay safe. Thank you, guys.